Good morning, my brothers and sisters. On this second devotional time, um, we are reading from Thy Geekdom Come. And last time, I think two weeks ago, I'm going to be trying to do this more consistently, but two weeks ago we talked about Doctor Who and uh, this true love. And uh, it was nice. Today, I honestly have no idea what we're talking about because I need to bring up the devotional. But uh, it should be good. Um, I just need a moment to bring it up because I am... I think that's volume two. I need volume one. Yes. Uh, no... Uh, yeah. There we go. All right. So, let me move my computer so that I can read and look at you. We have our devotional omen. This is number two, like I said, called For Fear of Demons, Angels, and the Lord. Uh, and the quote for this section is, uh, Bunnies Frighten Me. And that's quoted by Anya of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Now, I've only seen a few episodes of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, so I'm very intrigued to see what they'll talk about in this one. Um, we are going to be reading from Isaiah chapter 8, and I'm going to be using the HCSB version. Once I bring it up, because I again forgot to bring up the document I needed, but we're going to be reading Isaiah chapter 8. And it's not too long. I'll try to be kind of quick about reading it. But, uh, yeah, so it says this. Then the Lord said to me, take a large piece of parchment, write on it, and with ordinary pen, maher shalalahash bas, which means speeding to the plunder, hurrying to the spoil. I have appointed trustworthy witnesses, Uriah the priest, and Zechariah son of Jeperachiah. I was then intimate with the prophetess, and she conceived and gave birth to a son. Okay. The Lord said to me, name him Maher Shalalau Hashbaz, for before the boy knows how to call out father and mother, um, the wealth of Damascus and the spoils of Samaria will be carried off to the king of Assyria. The Lord spoke to me again because these people rejected the slowly flowing waters of Shiloh and rejoiced with resin, and the son of Ramalia, the Lord will certainly bring against them the rushing waters Euphrates River, the king of Assyria, and all his glory. Um, sorry, the dog was is very restless right now. It will pour into Judah, flood over it, sweep through, reaching up the neck in its spreading streams, and will fill your entire land, Emmanuel. Band together peoples and be broken. Pay attention, all you distant lands. Prepare for war. Be broken. Prepare for war. Be broken. Devise a plan. It will fail. Make a prediction. It will not happen. For God is with us. For this is what the Lord said to me. And great power to keep me from getting in the way of his people. Do not call any everything an alliance. These people say in this alliance, do not fear what they fear. Do not be terrified. You are to regard only the Lord of hosts as holy. Only he should be feared. Only he should be held in awe. He will be a sanctuary. But for the two houses of Israel, he will be a stone to stumble over and a rock to trip over and a trap and snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Many will stumble over these. They will fall and be broken. They will be snared and captured. Bind up the testimony. Seal up the instruction among my disciples. I will wait for the Lord who's hiding his face from the house of Jacob. I will wait for him. Here I am with the children of the Lord has given me the signs and wonders in Israel for the Lord of hosts who dwells in Mount Zion. When they say to you, consult the spirits of the dead and spiritists who chirp and mutter, shouldn't a people consult their God? Should they consult the dead on behalf of the living to the law, to the testimony? They do not speak according to this word. There will be no dawn for them. They will wander through the land dejected and hungry. When they are famished, they will become enraged and look upward, will curse their king and their god. They will look toward the earth and see only distress, darkness, gloom, and affliction. They will be driven into thick darkness. Wow, that's uh, kind of depressing. Not a very positive reading. Other than the only positive part is you really need to try to trust in God, your maker, your creator. And so what can we say? Uh, let's read the reflection now for... Uh, thy kingdom come devotion number two i'm afraid of sharks ever since i saw jaws as a kid i've had sudden random apprehensions that there may be a shark behind me wherever whenever i'm in a public pool it's very interesting i know these thoughts are illogical but try convincing me when my imagination conjures a set of jagged teeth in the waves behind me fear's a tricky thing on one hand 
It alerts us to potential threats, but on the other hand, it has the potential to completely control us like marionettes in the hands of a sadistic shark-faced puppeteer. Perhaps no fictional quartet has experienced being terrorized by fear like Buffy, Xander, Willow, and Oz in Buffy the Vampire Slayer episode, Fear Itself. The Scoobies find themselves wandering a frat house during a Halloween party. While a demon brings their fears into reality, the terrors begin predictably enough with cobwebs, bats, murderous skeletons, wielding knives. These proverbial bumps in the night are scary as it is, but the real horror begins when the superficial turns into more deep-seated, paralyzing feels. fears. Xander becomes invisible to his friends, giving new meaning to his fears that he's become irrelevant, irrelevant to the people he loves. Oz loses control of his inner werewolf, even without the full moon. Afraid he'll hurt Willow, he runs away from her. Willow experiences powerlessness and steps beyond her means to compensate. Her spell backfires and attacks her. Buffy fights vampires that erupt from the ground and tell her everyone she cared about will abandon her. The subject of fear is also prevalent in the Bible. Fear not, shout the angels of the Lord in several Bible stories. I'd like to think that I'm secure enough in my faith to be calm at the sight of God's messengers, but I suspect that's my pride talking. God's people are commanded to be courageous and not be afraid. Many times throughout Joshua, Isaiah, the Psalms, and other books of the Bible. We're also told to uphold a healthy fear of the Lord. Perhaps the enigmatic fear of the Lord isn't such a bad thing. After all, it's said to be the foundation of true knowledge. In Proverbs, key to our servicing to God in Deuteronomy and the deterrent from evil in Job. As a teenager, I often asked what it meant to fear the Lord, and I always, I was always thrown the same answer. It's not real fear, but more of a holy fear. I always found that answer unsatisfactory. Why didn't the Bible specify holy fear and not, holy crap, there's a shark behind me fear? What does holy fear even mean? I think the prophet Isaiah nails it when he draws a comparison between the Almighty God and the enemy nations threatening the fearful Jews. But the Lord of hosts, him you shall regard as holy. Let him be your fear and let him be your dread. In Isaiah 8.13, at the end of fear itself, the tension reaches its climax when Buffy accidentally summons Gaknar, the fear demon that has been putting them through their paces. As the roaring disfigured demon appears, black clad, red eyed, and brown horned, the Scoobies stare down at it in confusion. It's only three inches tall. Buffy says, This is Gaknar? Xandar says, Big Overture, Little Show. Like Buffy and the gang who realize fear demon that they've, they've been fighting is insignificant and easily squashed with one shoe, the holy fear of God is realizing that our fears are small compared to Him. They seem big until we compare them to God's power. Whether our fears are failures, Spiders, commitment, death, pain, or heights, they all have their potential to control us. Had I let my fear of sharks control me, I'd never experience the majesty of snorkeling off the coast of Kauai. The same is also true of our deep-seated fears, like the fear of rejection or loneliness. If they control us, if we risk missing out on important opportunities, true joy, and meaningful relationships, yet, when we acknowledge their irrationalities, our fears can seem so real and powerful in moments of panic. They can paralyze us into inaction or move us to do something foolish. They can inhibit us from using our gifts to impact others in positive ways. They can cause anxiety, negatively impacting our health. Fear can skew our view, transforming even the tiniest concerns into towers of dread. That's where the fear of the Lord comes in. It's the measuring stick that puts all our trivial fears in perspective. If the omnipotent God who created the infinite universe was just a few words away, who knows every thought of every person throughout the history who can topple giants with tiny stones and destroy entire armies with monstrous waves? monstrous waves is on our side whom or what shall we truly fear god is not someone to be afraid of in that shark sense as jesus is always extending a hand to those who are powerless and even sinful rather we can be confident in his overarching power next to god we can see our fears as god does and our macabre mountains are made into molehills 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 labeled actual size the lord is my light and my salvation whom shall i fear the lord is a stronghold of my life of whom Shall I be afraid? Psalm 27, 1. So, first question. What are you afraid of? Uh, as I read through this, first I just want to say I really appreciate the author who is uh, Kyle R Rudge, or Rouge, I don't know, Kyle Rudge. Um, I truly appreciate his reminder that the fear of God and the strength of God and everything about God when we trust in Him is so much bigger than like our greatest fear, the greatest fear that we have as individuals and as collective humans. But what am I afraid of? Um, I'm afraid of failure. I'm afraid of kind of putting myself out there, like even in focusing on uh, streaming, you know, putting myself out there and nobody showing up, 
nobody giving back, nobody participating with me. Uh, but in terms of life and ministry, sometimes I fear failing my kids. I fear not being a good enough husband, uh, not not growing, not getting better. You know, I have a lot of, I have a number of, I don't know, discipline issues and ways in which I get distracted and I want to get better. I want to be more balanced. I want to be more disciplined and focused. Uh, have a good mix, you know, of real life and escape. Like, you know, that's part of the reason that I'm doing devotional times during streaming video games, because if I just make it about video games, if I just make it about escape for an hour or two, um, that's not enough. I, I want, I want to bring redemption to everything that I enjoy, everything that's a part of my life, every, to everyone's life. So I guess I'm just afraid of failure. And, uh, and then the next, the follow-up question is, what are you missing out on because of that fear? Well, I'm missing out on saying I tried, uh, you know, it's funny. I, I think up to this point, I've been streaming for off and on for three or four years and nothing has really happened. I've crossed a hundred followers. Ooh, <laughs> that's about it. Um, you know, I'm affiliate status. Wow. That's amazing. I have all the numbers in green, except for the average followers during a stream, which is two, maybe 2.2. Um, but then I look back and I'm like, I've not consistently streamed ever, like more than a week. Um, but even looking beyond streaming, like what does my fear prevent, my fear of failure prevents me from even really trying, like it takes work. It takes time for, for the efforts that we make, the practice that we, that we have to put ourselves out there in relationship in our careers and ministry. It takes a lot of work and you know, the five steps you take. You have to take three steps back to really learn from that and then take five more steps forward. But I'm getting two or three steps forward, anticipating the three steps back I'm going to have to take and then be like, you know what? I'm just going to sit here sometimes. It's not all the time. It's not every day, but I'm missing out on giving not only myself the opportunity, but I'm missing out on giving God an opportunity to work in and through me. And, you know, so what are your, what are your fears and how are they stopping you from doing what you were made to do, what you want to do, what God has called you to do. Uh, the last question is, if you were to measure your fear, how tall would it be? What about when you compare that measurement to God's size? I mean, I think it would be a, a three inch demon. Like I think about, um, I think about when I, I, here's another one that I'm really bad at is housework. Um, I, I'm not a handyman, but I don't even try most of the time because I'm afraid of failure because I'm afraid I'm just going to do it. It's going to break. I'm going to make it worse. I'm still going to have to pay for someone to do it. And so I don't even try. But then there are some times when after Mindy, my wife's been bugging me after I've been bugging myself and like psyching myself up for an hour, two hours. And then I do it and it takes five minutes and then I get it done. It's like, that wasn't even that hard. Like, you know, it, it's like changing a light bulb and being like, oh, that's all I had to do. <laughs> I've put this off for weeks and all it was was changing a light bulb. I mean, obviously it's not changing a light bulb, but. Um, it's something that winds up being that simple, you know, but it's the fear. It's the, everything else leading up to that where I really struggle. And so when I compare to either how difficult it actually is, if my feel fear of failure will actually come to be, and then of course, comparing it to God, I mean, God is, I can do all things through Christ who, who gives me strength, uh, who loves me and cares for me, who, you know, who saved me, who made me who I am today. Um, I don't know. So putting in that perspective, keeping my eyes on the author and perfecter of my faith and daily devotion. Um, I got, I got to do that. I got to confess. I got to talk. I got to pray. I got to share. And in the end, I'm going to find that my fears are this big and God is so much bigger. And so my prayer is obviously for you. If you're listening, the one person, maybe you're the two or the 10 or more. If you're here live, if you're listening to this VOD, if you're listening to it in a podcast form, what are your fears? Call them out. Give them to God. Can't tell you how many times my kids have yelled for me and uh, at, at night 
during the night before, like right around bedtime, an hour after bedtime, they're like, I'm afraid. And we pray together. And I say, you got to give it to God, kids. Natasha, James, you got to trust in him. He's bigger. And we've got to do that. I've got to take my own advice. And i got to offer it to him. And so why don't we just go right into prayer and pray that today, that we would be able to face our fears, not knowing that we're not alone and knowing that God's with us if we trust in him, if we um, follow him and, you know, just take steps of faith. Let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for this day. I thank you, Lord, for this reminder from Isaiah, from Buffy the Vampire Slayer, and uh, from Thy Geetham Come Devotional, God, that our fears can be paralyzing, but they don't have the final say. And when they're compared to God, there's so little. And so, God, we do. We say farewell to our fears, and we say hello to God. We say hello to not only what He can do, but what He can do through us. And so, God, I pray that you would work in our hearts, that you would work in our lives, whether it's with our families, with our friends, through streaming, through our careers. God, we just offer our fears to you and pray that you help us to walk forward in faith, knowing that we will have success, not just because we tried, but because we tried with your strength and we walked in faith. Lord, we love you. We thank you. It's in Jesus' name I pray all these things. Amen.